You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Syracuse basketball's ACC schedule came out last night, and here are my takeaways from the schedule release. Now, first and foremost, I watched the video that Syracuse basketball posted on Twitter, and let's just say our players got to learn how to draw better, okay? Their drawing skills were not up to par. I I, th- I don't know if this team is going to win a game this season because they couldn't draw. Obviously, I- I'm kidding. It was a funny video. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. But anyways, let's get into the schedule takeaways. Now, we already knew the opponents. We knew the opponents, and we knew the home and away splits. That was already out there for everyone to see. It was public knowledge. I have covered it on the Locked on Syracuse podcast. But in case you didn't remember that was out, I'll give you the one main takeaway that I had from the release of that, which is that Syracuse is facing Duke, North Carolina, and Virginia just one time each this season, and all of those games are at home. That is significant because those three teams are usually three of the top teams in the league, and Syracuse is getting those teams just once this year, and they're all at home, which works to our advantage. I don't think Syracuse has ever won in Chapel Hill. They've won at Duke before, and at Virginia is also a very, very difficult place to play. So it's very good that they're getting them at home. As far as the schedule itself and what I took from it, as predicted, the ACC did Syracuse a favor with the West Coast teams that they are facing. Syracuse is one of the very few teams in the league that is going to have to face Cal and Stanford on the road this season. They're going to have to play both. Both of them are on the road. That was one of my takeaways when the schedule first came out, that they're going to have to play both teams in California. But if you recall, I mentioned that, look, as much as it might be you know, sucky with the travel, I do think that the ACC will do Syracuse a favor and have it be a West Coast trip rather than making a flight to California and then having to fly somewhere else another day. And as predicted, they did that. So Syracuse is going to play at Stanford on Wednesday, January 29th. Okay, so they'll be on the West Coast for that one. They're going to stay in the state of California because on Saturday, February 1st, that very same week, they are playing Cal. So the West Coast trip, as predicted, both teams are going to be back-to-back They're not going to have to leave the state of California. That works to Syracuse's advantage, okay? They're not going to have to fly anywhere else. I was kind of worried that, hey, are they going to have Syracuse on a Wednesday, go to Stanford, and then Saturday they're going to return home, and then the next Wednesday they're going to go to, you know, to, to Cal or something? You get the idea. That's not the case. The schedule makers have them going back to back, Stanford, and then Cal. Plus, This is a little bit of a bonus, and you can take what you want from it, but Syracuse is going to be playing a home game before the West Coast swing. I think that's pretty significant. They're playing, I think, Pitt at home the Saturday before they go to the Wednesday game against Stanford. The reason why that's significant is because they're going to be able to leave from Syracuse. They're going to be able to be comfortable in Syracuse before getting on that cross-country trip. Whereas it could have easily been they have a road game, let's say, at SMU, and then they got to go from SMU, and they have to make the decision to either travel to California or fly back to Syracuse. In this case, they don't have to do it. They're going to be in Syracuse before the game, and then they can fly directly from Syracuse to California. I think that is significant. Leave a comment in the comment section below your thoughts on that, that Syracuse is getting a home game before the West Coast trip. I think it is significant. I want to hear your thoughts on that. Number two, I think we know what the toughest stretch is on Syracuse's ACC schedule specifically. Once again, we're only talking about the ACC schedule. We've we've gone over the non-conference games. The schedule for that has been out for quite some time. This is just going to be about league play. The tough stretch for Syracuse appears to be in late January to mid-February, so that about two-week stretch where there's five games. Here are the five games. It's going to start with the West Coast, right, at Stanford, at Cal. 
We'll see how Syracuse will fare playing on the West Coast. Then Syracuse returns home from Cal on that Saturday to face Duke at home Wednesday in primetime. Duke is obviously projected to be one of the top teams in the ACC once again. So you go from West Coast and then your home game is Duke. That's not fun. But again, it's a tough team anyway, right? Then Syracuse stays at home and they play Boston College on Saturday. Maybe that is the quote-unquote easiest game of those five. But then after that, they got to go to Miami. That won't be easy projected, right? And then home against North Carolina right after that. At minimum, they're going to face at least two tournament teams of that five-game stretch, North Carolina and Duke. Possibly a third in Miami. I think Miami has high expectations this season. They have a pretty good roster. That could be three tournament teams from the ACC that they got to face in that five-game stretch. Oh, it's a six-game stretch, rather. Yeah, it's six games. But anyways, Boston College is maybe the quote-unquote easiest, but you also got Cal and Stanford. It might not be the toughest games, but they're on the road, so you never really quite know. So that six-game stretch, not five-game stretch, I think is the toughest on Syracuse's league play schedule. If you have any thoughts on that, leave a comment in the comment section below. But that was one of my takeaways. And number three, let's talk about the students. I'm not a student anymore at Syracuse. I graduated last May. But I think the students really won with this schedule release. Every ACC Saturday home game for Syracuse, students will be in session. That means they will be able to attend. Not saying that they can't attend when they're not in session, but they'll actually be on campus. All right. I, I did a little digging. It's public knowledge. You can go online, look at the Syracuse academic calendar. When will students be in session? Well, December 17th through January 13th is their winter break. But Syracuse's first Saturday home game in league play is against Notre Dame on January 18th. So that means the students are going to be in session. And in total, the students will have a chance to go to six ACC Saturday games this year. So good for them. They won. The students really made out well with this schedule release. Thank you to the ACC schedule makers for the students. Good for them, right? I wish I had that when I was a student. I think... Last year, they, they last year I don't think they had six. The year before that, they had significantly less than that. So, hey, good for the students that they get a lot of Saturday home league games. That's a good thing for them. All right, so those are my schedule takeaways from the ACC. As predicted, Syracuse is going to face the West Coast teams back-to-back -back in California, which is good. The toughest stretch is a six-game stretch between late January and mid-February. And the students won with the schedule and the Saturday home games that they have on it. 